it's easy to look at Lake Superior and see it as this gigantic body of water that we couldn't possibly hurt. It is so big. But I've always thought what's interesting about Lake Superior is how little the water turns over. On, on Lake Erie, the water changes in Lake Erie every five years. There's a complete change in the water. In, in Lake Superior, that water changes every 193 years. There's very little water flowing out relatively it, to Lake Superior. There's relatively little water running in. Lake Superior has a very small watershed considering the size of the lake. And so what we're putting into the lake, whether it's sediment or ship ballast or, or what uh, sewage from, from a city, it, it basically is going to stay in that lake a long time. I'm Rick Schubert and I'm on the board of the Flute Reed Partnership and the coordinator of the group. The Flute Reed River is in Hovland, Minnesota, which is about halfway between Grand Portage and Grand Marais. And the river's about seven miles long. This river and other rivers on the North Shore and all around Lake Superior are, are severely affecting Lake Superior. And, and so the main impact of the river on Lake Superior is the, is the sediment that it dumps into the lake. And so we're getting algae blooms on Chicago Bay that we've never had before. We've done quite a bit of monitoring on the river to establish a baseline so we can know whether the river is, is getting better or worse. One main goal of ours is educating ourselves and our community to how, how watersheds work and how specifically the flute reed works. We've done an annual tree planting. This year we did a little differently. We'll just spread out and kind of work our way, maybe work our way more east this time. Okay. So we're volunteers with the Northern Bedrock Conservation Corps. And right now we're working with the uh, Flute Reed River Partnership, um, sort of planting more native trees back in the area to reduce sediment in the Flute Reed River. In certain areas, there's a lot of runoff. Um, so if you live along a stream, there's runoff that comes from your house and your garage and can take sediment and pollutants into the stream, affecting what type of things grow in our streams, um, more allergy growth, depleting the oxygen, um, and that affecting all of our species of fish and other aquatics. We're each assigned different types of trees and where to plant them. There was a woman, an ecologist, who walked through yesterday and kind of planned everything out for us. So. In these swampy areas here, we're planting some cedars and hoping that they'll grow back in and replace some of the ash. We'll be able to, you know, have something else growing if they ever do get infected with the emerald ash borer. All right, and then. Some of the youth may want to go camping. And like the work part, maybe they weren't excited about, but once they were out there with their peers, having fun, learning something. They start opening up more of like, wow, I'm actually planting a tree, and trees grow up, and they last a long time. This is a huge thing that I'm being a part of. We're planting 300 trees we're, we're, right now, and I like hearing that number. I'm thinking, we're gonna plant 300 trees. Sounds like a lot. And it is. And I think throughout the weekend, we're planting 1,500 trees. It's hard labor, but it's also kind of a, um, a really nice way to be out in the woods. At whatever age, people like to contribute and feel like they're you know, a valuable part of the community. And this is a really good way for young people to be able to do that. When I go home and tell people about it, I've done things like this um, with my Girl Scout troop. They come, what, you did what all weekend? Yeah, we <laughs> yeah, I got up at 5.30 and drove out to Grand Marais and planted trees in the forest all day. Why? Why? Because <laughs> I really enjoy it and it's good for the earth. Right. 